in Chicago public schools right now, starting after this policy was passed in December, starting in fifth grade, fifth grade, what are you, nine, 10 years old? Chicago public schools must provide you, a nine or 10 year old, a free condom at school. Let's have these two characters kiss. Let's in the background, this, like I was just, wherever I could, just basically adding queerness to like, the, if you see anything queer in the show, come around them. But like, I, I just was like, no one would stop me. baby and that means we are back for another episode of outdated this time let's talk about sex baby let's talk about you and me but not in the fun like normal way uh kids are talking about sex yeah kids children pretty much all the time in modern society, be it through the education that they're experiencing inside and out of the classroom, the entertainment that they're consuming, and just generally the direction of where our culture has gone in the last several years. Many of you have suggested that I do an episode on this and it has been requested. So today we are diving into all of the cultural lies being taught to the next generation right now as we speak on the topic of sex. Buckle up, because this is a very important conversation for us to have, even if it happens to be a bit controversial. But if we don't speak up about this now, the conversations we'll have 5, 10, 15 years down the road won't even remotely resemble anything we talk about today. Before we dive into all of this, I want to thank our sponsors who helped to make Outdated possible. Thank you so much, namely to Public Square, our headline sponsor. Across the country, Americans are discovering that if we want to change this nation, we have to change the way the marketplace works. Woke corporations are seeking to divide us, big banks are freezing the accounts of people that disagree with their political views, and our supply chain is actively dependent upon countries that actively work against our values. It's time for a change, and that change starts with you and your wallet. That's why I am so proud to partner with Public Square, the largest directory of freedom-loving businesses our nation has ever seen. Public Square is the first app to connect freedom-loving Americans with their local community and businesses in their backyard that share their values. Whether you want to support a restaurant that only buys from local farms, a coffee shop that took a stand against COVID mandates, or a bank that would never cancel you for your political views, Public Square is your guide. Just download the Public Square app on the Apple App Store or Google Play, create a free account, and begin your search. If you're a business owner, you can also list your business for free so that your local community can find and support you today. I have downloaded this app. I absolutely love using it. It's Public SQ public square. Thank you guys so much for supporting Outdated. All right, jumping right in because I don't want to waste any of our time today. Kids, children, as I said, as we opened this episode, are learning about sex, but not in a healthy, exciting, Judeo-Christian value way that's actually going to set them up for success and emotional fulfillment and sexual satisfaction as adults. No, 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 no. Our culture and our education system and the entertainment industry are actively pushing children into conversations that are setting them up for failure. And I think this really came to our attention in the last several weeks because of conversations that were happening at the highest level with executives at Disney, which obviously has spurred so much controversy at the outset of this conversation and in the aftermath. The state of Florida has now revoked the special tax exemption status for Disney World there in Florida, and there's a lot of conversations about what the future of Disney from a parent and consumer perspective looks like for the future of America. Disney's stocks are absolutely tanking. Disney Plus subscriptions are being canceled left and right. And if you're unfamiliar with really where all of this started, this started with a leaked executive call where the president of Disney's entertainment contact, content, excuse me, her name was Carrie Burke, announced on this Zoom call that as the mother of what she called to be two queer children, one of her children being transgender and one being pansexual, she intended, again, she's the president of Disney's general entertainment content, she intends to drastically ramp up queer visibility in all Disney content. And ultimately, her goal is to have 50% a whopping 50% by the end of this calendar year of all Disney characters in all Disney productions to be LGBTQIA+, or other underrepresented 
minorities. So that's an interesting point in and of itself, because that's not indicative of an actual societal percentage or a societal conversation about what it means to be LGBTQIA+. But this call goes on where one of the um, animators for Disney, somebody who actually is behind the scenes storyboarding these things, working on the animation, says in this same Imagine the Future Disney executive call, she's doing absolutely everything she can to add queerness to Disney content. I made a TikTok about this the other day. Let's take a look. Hey, everybody in media and politics this week is focused on how Disney announced they're removing gendered language from the intercom system in their parks. I think it's a huge mistake for us to focus on that piece of the story, when the real story is that Disney itself has a very troubling, not-so-secret agenda to expose children to sex including multiple situations of Disney employees being arrested in human trafficking and child predator stings. Check out what just one Disney animator had to say in a recently leaked executive call. Let's have these two characters kiss. Let's, in the background, this, like, I was just, wherever I could, just basically adding queerness to, like, the, if you see anything queer in the show, come around them. But, like, I, I just was like, no one would stop me. Ever notice how Disney and all of its subsidiaries, ESPN, Marvel, Star Wars, and just Disney movies themselves, are so focused on talking to your children about sex and gender. It's weird, it's creepy, and that should be the story, not what's happening over the intercoms with woke language at Disney World and Disneyland. Wow, a lot to unpack here, but rooted at the very baseline of this conversation is a very simple premise. Disney intends to expose children to sexually fueled and sexually charged conversations as children. And as we know, this has really spurred a much larger conversation about what's been happening culturally in our country to dramatically alter the very meaning of what sex is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be something consumed by five-year-olds watching animated Disney movies. It's not supposed to be a conversation that's happening in kindergarten or first grade classrooms with insanely woke progressive teachers trying to make kids feel good about sex. It's not supposed to be a summer camp activity that you ship your kids off to do in between school years. Oh yeah, we're going to talk about that today. Sex was supposed to be a gift from God, our most intimate way of connecting with another human being, the person we're intended to spend the rest of our life with, and something that actually brings joy and fulfillment into our lives. And unfortunately, what started as hookup culture and promoting sexual anarchy has now evolved into roping children yeah, children, into these conversations well before they are mature enough or emotionally prepared to do so. So today, for this episode about Dated, I thought it would be fascinating for us to unpack several different cultural examples of what specifically is being taught to the next generation about sex, and more importantly, what we, as not just conservatives or freedom-loving individuals or Christians, but we as rational, sane human beings who care about the well-being of children and want to set them up for success and emo emotional fulfillment in the future, can do about it. We started with Disney, and I'm glad I set that as the tone because I want to dive in first to the entertainment industry. This is perhaps one of the most powerful ways kids and teenagers are exposed to these conversations and these topics well before they are emotionally prepared to do so, simply because it's in the content that they are consuming, especially the most popular content that happens to be out there. I don't know if you guys are familiar with a TV show called Euphoria, but this is a relatively new show that is being produced by HBO. It's streaming through the HBO Max subscription service and app, and interestingly, is one of the most popular shows on the market today, targeting teenagers and a young audience. It's actually very quickly risen through the ranks through its provider, HBO, to become the second most watched HBO show since 2004 behind Game of Thrones. And if you're at all familiar with Game of Thrones, you know that this was easily shattering records left and right as one of the most popular TV shows of all time. So Euphoria is now right behind Game of Thrones in HBO viewership. The show is supposed to be following teenagers and their experience of coming into adulthood, which is a very common theme that we've seen throughout Hollywood. But interestingly, Euphoria highlights much different stories than what most teenage coming-of-age television shows happen to highlight. For example, there's an entire storyline where a transgender teen meets an adult human being 
through a dating app whose username, the adult, is Dominant Daddy, and this transgender teen meets up with this adult to hook up and have sex with them. There's a storyline where one teenager has to borrow urine from their friends, clean urine, to pass their suspecting parents' drug tests, and even the importance of sex as an important aspect of teenage culture, where in just one episode alone, Euphoria, as a television show, flashes 30, 30 penises on screen in one episode alone. Like, full frontal, everything is out there. Yeah. And this is the second most watched HBO show of all time and easily one of the top television shows that teenagers in America are currently watching. It's debauchery is what it is, and it's not entertainment. It's grooming of teenagers to make them think that this is normal culture, when in reality, it's indicative of a much larger problem where, sadly, this is normal culture in America. It's what leads to these television shows being so popular to begin with, but just because something is normal doesn't necessarily mean it's right or moral or actually setting our generation up for success. Entertainment is just one tiny facet of where these conversations are actually taking place, and I would argue they more often than not don't start with entertainment, but they start in the education system within the four walls of a classroom. I covered a story last December where the Chicago Public Schools Board of Education, the school board for Chicago's um, school district, AKA the worst school district and school board in the country. These people are always at the forefront of the most progressive, AKA regressive conversations and curriculum that's taking hold across our country. For example, the Chicago Public Schools Board was the first in the nation to approve the very controversial New York Times 1619 project to be actually implemented as curriculum in Chicago public schools. Now that is a nationwide trend. And I think we're going to start to see conversations just like this one that I'm about to tell you take off nationwide as well. In December, the Chicago Public Schools Board of Education passed a new policy that enforces that all public schools have to hand out free condoms, free condoms to students. And you'd think, all right, well, that's really bad in high school. It's not just in high school. You'd think, oh, wow, that's like really bad in middle school. It's not just in middle school. In Chicago public schools right now, starting after this policy was passed in December, starting in fifth grade, fifth grade, what are you, nine, 10 years old? Chicago public schools must provide you, a nine or 10 year old, a free condom at school. Why? So fifth graders can have sex. That's why. It's not okay, but it is normal. And this trend of pushing children into these conversations and these behaviors, and for lack of a better term, because this really is the best word that we have to use, grooming them to be interested in sex in the first place. This is happening in schools all over the country. One governor in particular who I absolutely adore and most rational, sane-thinking, freedom-loving Americans do as well is Governor Ron DeSantis in Florida. He decided to do something about it, and with the help of the state legislature, passed something called the Parental Rights and Education Bill uh, just recently through the state legislature. It's now been signed into a law. It's more commonly known in the mainstream media as the Don't Say Gay Bill. Obviously, if you've even remotely read the bill, actually, you don't even need to read it. You can just pull it up on your web browser and hit control F and type in G-A-Y. Nowhere is the word gay even mentioned in the bill. So that's not even the direction that they were going. This bill was put into place and originally conceptualized because they wanted to stop these very graphic conversations about gender identity, about sexual orientation, and the graphic details of the action of sex to begin with, they wanted to stop those from happening in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third grade. Not a controversial stance to take whatsoever. And yet, all of the people, all of the teachers, all of the woke progressive educators who for the last five to 10 years have been screaming from the rooftops, insisting that they weren't trying to groom your children, that they weren't talking about sex in the classroom, had absolute meltdowns, meltdowns about this stuff. 
TikTok is easily the best place where we can find this type of content, especially when it comes to these teachers. So let's show one of my absolute favorite ones about the Don't Say Gay Bill right now. Oh, here we go. Wow, it's a lot to unpack. Uh, fun little meltdown. These people are so stupid that they don't even actually read the legislation. It has nothing to do with whether or not you can say gay. You can't talk about straight sex either, nor should you, when you're talking to kindergartners, first graders, second graders, and third graders. If you talk about sex, gay, straight, or anywhere in between with children, you are a groomer. Period. End of story. That's not a controversial take to have whatsoever. And yet somehow, this has become the most controversial topic of the day in modern America. Teachers on TikTok, even well before the don't say gay bill conversations were even remotely happening on social media, have started to become really emboldened about having these conversations with kids to begin with. And it's actually really shocking to know that many of these teachers don't care about parental autonomy. They don't care about state laws. They don't care about cultural conversations telling you not to talk about sex with children. They're just going to do it Anyway, and they disguise it in this very welcoming, open arms, we want to have a progressive culture of encouraging children to accept people of all identities, but in reality, these conversations really are rooted in sexual attraction, sexual orientation, and what this actually means on a practical level. I have a couple of examples from our friends at Libs of TikTok. God bless you. You are doing the Lord's work. We are absolutely grateful for everything that you are doing. Uh, and you guys are going to get a kick out of these. Let's check it out. This has been my first year in preschool with a class of my own, teaching alongside another queer neurodivergent educator, and we have been rocking our twos class. We've been talking about gender and skin color and consent and empathy and our bodies and autonomy. It's been fabulous. But our teaching team is shifting and a new person is being onboarded, someone with many years of experience. So today at the lunch table, when the topic of gender and genitals came up, one of our students plainly looked up and said, well, I'm a girl today, but I know that teacher Ko isn't. No, they're Envy. And the look on the incoming teacher's face was priceless. She was shocked in a good way. And she just looked around at the two of us and said, this class is incredible and I am so impressed. Hey y'all, let me introduce you to our non-binary alpaca. The kids voted on a gender neutral name, Alex, for them. Alex was there to help me during the really quiet moments when nobody would talk during virtual learning. Yeah, they were so quiet! But then I also took it as an opportunity to teach my students about how to respect people's pronouns. Did Alex ever get misgendered? Yes. But then it opened up some teachable moments about what to do when that would happen. For example, hey Mr. Vung, did he just wake up from his nap? Oh, do you mean did they wake up from their nap? Yeah, they just did. I would apologize quickly, make the correction, and move on. I started off modeling how to correct somebody, and then afterwards my students would correct each other whenever somebody would misgender Alex here. Representation in the classroom mattered. My kids were fifth graders, and they still got a kick out of Alex. Oh yes, and here's Alex's friend, Lincoln the Llama, who goes by pronouns he, him. At first, my students thought that he had very feminine features, so they thought that he was a girl. And this is why we should never assume somebody's gender just based on what they look like. Alright, Lincoln, say something. 
Hello. My students were really surprised how low his voice sounded. Don't assume. Nice. Nice. Transgender alpaca stuffed animals. That's really going to move the needle there on education. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. So all of this is happening. And meanwhile, you think that these conversations are happening in isolation, be it a conversation in a sex ed course, in health class, an opportunity where parents may have the chance to opt out of those classes, to pull their kid out of school that day, um, or just teach their children, this is what you're going to learn in school, and here is what we actually believe at home, or here is something that's a little bit more rooted in objective truth. No, these conversations are not just happening in sex ed class. They're not just happening in health. They're not happening in high school, necessarily in isolation. They're happening at every level of education in pretty much every subject. And if you don't believe me, just last week, I discovered a public school assignment from a public school district in Missouri for high school math class. Math. What math has to do with sex? I don't know. Have yet to figure that out. I'm not a fan of math. Uh, but this assignment in particular made me absolutely stop in my tracks for just how bad math has become. I'll play the little reel that I did on Instagram for this, and then I'll show you guys the actual assignment in and of itself. I've always hated math. Math class, math homework, math tests. Math was really the one subject I really struggled with growing up as a kid. But I never remembered math looking like this. This is actual math homework from a public school district in Missouri trying to teach kids about algebra while also teaching them about the life of Maya Angelou and being a pimp and a prostitute. I'm not exactly sure what critical race theory and sexual education has to do with algebra, but maybe I'm just stupid. Whatever happened to the word problems that were like Sally buys 12 watermelons and Chris buys eight cantaloupes at the grocery store for a fun afternoon in the summer? Who has more fruit? We've got to stop doing this with sex and small children at school, especially in math. It's ridiculous. So this assignment appears to be algebra, teaching you that letters can substitute for numbers and how you actually do the equations to figure out what those letters are tied to numerically. But it's not stopping there. It's not just teaching you how to do math, a very fundamental basic educational skill. No, 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 no. It simultaneously is roping in critical race theory and sexual education, because why not? Because math is the perfect venue to have these conversations. So this is an isolation, obviously, with just two of these questions. But just generally speaking, the larger assignment was about the life of Maya Angelou, because that's important to know in math class. You'll never learn that in another class in high school. So God forbid you don't learn it. We're going to teach you right here in math, kid, where they're asking Angelou was sexually abused by her mother's blank. You fill in boyfriend, brother, father at age eight, which shaped her career choices and motivation for writing. The next question says, trying to support her son as a single mother, she works as a pimp prostitute and blank bookie drug dealer nightclub dancer insane 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 y equals mx plus b should have nothing to do with working as a pimp or a prostitute but the education system is that far flawed where these are not good conversations for us to be having, but again, are the normal conversations that unfortunately have become absolutely mainstream for Gen Z and the next generation beyond that. I want to wrap up today's episode, and I know it's a little bit shorter than normal, but I really wanted to pack a punch with this one, with something that has really taken me aback on this conversation. And it's because education as we know it has really dramatically transformed outside of brick and mortar classrooms. It's not just happening in a traditional setting where 30 kids are sitting around you and you have your teacher at the whiteboard and that's how you learn. No, in the last few years, largely thanks to our response to COVID-19, education has become fundamentally digital and we're looking for outside resources to supplement education both inside and outside the classroom through content creation. A friend of mine recently made me aware of this YouTube channel I had never heard of before 
called Amaze. And I don't know if you've ever heard of Amaze on YouTube, uh, but they are an extremely popular channel. Let's look, actually, I wanna have the exact right number for you. Right now, as we speak, it has 220,000 subscribers, insane. And every one of their views is getting well over hundreds of thousands of views, 662,000, 224,000, 201,000, 167,000. These are all views on their videos. Here is the description of their playlist or of their channel. Real sex ed info in fun animated videos that give you all the answers you actually want to know about sex, your body, and relationships. We release new videos every other Thursday. Amaze is a collaboration between experts in the field of sex education, advocates for youth, answer and youth tech health to create engaging age appropriate we'll come back to that online sex education resources age appropriate so i did a little bit more digging once my friend exposed me to this channel and it turns out this channel is being shown in classrooms all around the world as supplementary sex education material inside of school there was a Twitter thread by someone named Chris Elston, and he was explaining how a father, an anonymous father in Ontario, Canada, had their child who's in seventh grade, grade seven in Canada, record an audio recording of one of these videos being shown in class. And so I guess this was being played in the seventh grade class, and the video that they were shown was about gender identities and being a transgender teen. Uh, fascinating. These are conversations, again, being happening in seventh grade. So this is 12, 13 years old, perhaps. And they're talking about using anatomical terms to throw out the concept of biological gender. They talk about puberty blockers and why it's important to talk about your feelings of gender with your parents, counselors, therapists, doctors, so that you can have an endocrinologist specializing in hormones, prescribe you hormones to block puberty. Uh, just a few actual lines from some of these videos. Here's one for you. What is transgender? Well, when you're born, the adults in your life decide your gender identity based on two particular features. There's a penis, it's a boy. Vulva, it's a girl. And if someone is trans or their gender identity doesn't match what society says, so they can feel that they're a boy when society is saying they're a girl or the other way around, or you can also just not identify with any gender at all. Here's a different transcript for you. If you feel you want more time to explore how you feel about your gender before your body starts to change, it's important to talk with a parent, counselor, therapist, or doctor about the feelings you have regarding your gender. After some discussion and counseling, you may be referred to an endocrinologist. Endocrinologists specialize in hormones, and they are most likely to prescribe puberty blockers for someone who wants them. How about a different one? When a girl reports that she feels like a boy or is a boy, that sentiment may reflect her perception of how her personality and preferences compare to the rest of her peers. Okay, so these are all direct quotes from these videos. Fascinating, fascinating. And again, they're being targeted to a viewership that is pre-puberty so that they can educate, aka indoctrinate children to talk to adult figures in their life to stop puberty from even happening up front by fundamentally changing the sexual chemistry of their body, altering their sex hormones, maybe even having gender affirming surgery, which actually is pretty much the opposite of actually affirming someone's health and well being. Just a few of the most popular videos when you just first search Amaze YouTube channel, I want to read you some of the titles. They're, they're fascinating. Sex education, what is Amaze? Does sex hurt the first time? Tips for loving yourself and other. Amaze takes the awkward out of sex ed. What causes a red bump down there? Why would someone wear a chest binder? HIV and health disparities. Wait, does oral count as sex? I had unprotected sex and I didn't get pregnant. Why? I'm just reading the headline names of a small handful of these videos. Wow. So walking through just the very basic timeline of what all of this has looked like, when I was a child 
and especially a teenager coming into middle and high school, we started to notice a massive trend promoting hookup culture and online dating in the very beginning of dating apps when I was in high school and the smartphone was coming into fruition. A lack of commitment in intimate sexual relationships became a new norm. And within just a few years, we have seen a dramatic transformation within a decade. I'll be 25 in May, and a lot of this really started becoming aware to me when I was 15. Within a decade, that has evolved into kids should be talking about sex, into the most extreme examples, which we really didn't dive into in this episode, which we should do in another one because they're long conversations in and of themselves, that maybe pedophilia isn't a bad thing, which is a conversation legitimately happening on college campuses where professors are calling pedophiles minor attracted people, where we're handing out free condoms encouraging sexual intercourse for children starting in fifth grade in certain cities around the country where teachers of public schools are absolutely melting down because they don't have the legal capacity to talk about the graphic details of sex with people in kindergarten, with kindergartners, five-year-olds, people who don't even know how to tie their shoes or zip up their jacket. We've created YouTube channels pushing videos to children who have yet to go through puberty to stop them from going through puberty because that is now normal. We have school districts in California allowing children to be prescribed hormones and hormone therapy and even start to consider dramatically life-altering surgeries to change their gender and their sexual orientation and their sexual behavior without their parents even knowing these conversations are happening. And shockingly, if you still don't believe me, that the new mainstream is to get kids thinking about being passionate about and actually engaging in sex. If you don't think that is normal, here's the last point I'll make. The president of the United States, the president of the United States actually publicly said it was a priority of this administration to allow children to chemically castrate themselves and have sexually altering surgeries to be gender affirming, which will forever change their experience of sex and any sexual satisfaction and emotional fulfillment they can get out of it. Listen to this. The parents of transgender children, affirming your child's identity is one of the most powerful things you can do to keep them safe and healthy. If there are any transgender American who's struggling, please know that you're not alone. To parents and children alike, Please ask for help. We were not designed for this. Our culture was not founded for this. We were designed to experience sex as potentially the greatest gift God gave us, as the most intimate way you can physically connect with the person you're supposed to spend the rest of your life with, the way you can share everything with them. Uh, in Genesis, it says, when, they're, when they talk about the origins of sex in the book of Genesis, it simply says they become one flesh. What does that mean? It means you become one. What hurts one person hurts the other. What elates one person elates the other. And you are so intimately, deeply connected with that person that nothing else could possibly compare. Nothing else brings you together as one flesh. And yet now, we're corrupting that by shoving five-year-olds into this conversation by encouraging fifth graders to give that all away now at nine or 10 years old, by telling teenagers they should be watching shows that literally showcase pornography like Euphoria, by prescribing hormone treatments that's going to forever alter their experience of sex at 12, 13, maybe even younger, according to our president of the United States, we are better than this. As a country, as a society, as humanity, we are better than this. And the next generation deserves more than the lies that are being told to them about sex from Disney, from their teacher, from HBO, from Amaze's YouTube channel, from culture, from our society. So it has to start with us to speak the truth into the lives of the next generation. 
there are a million things that we can do to stop this from continuing to become normal. Newsflash, it already is normal. It doesn't have to be that way, though, if we're brave enough and courageous enough to have the difficult conversations now, to have the uncomfortable, controversial conversations now, like, I don't know, saying the word sex to your children and your teenagers in a positive way, teaching them what sex was actually designed to be from a biblical standpoint and from the word of God himself, letting them know there is a better alternative than the emotional emptiness associated with the normal culture of our society today. It has to start with us. Because if we don't have these conversations now, I doubt we'll have an opportunity to have them in the next five to 10 years. Easy steps you can take at this moment in time. If you're a parent and you have a teenager, talk to your teenager about what sex was actually designed to be. If you're a parent of a child of any age, research what the curriculum at your school is teaching your child. Don't just drop them off and assume you are handing them into the hands of capable, responsible, moral adults in the classroom. Make sure that YouTube series like Amaze are not being watched by your children. If you're a teenager or a young adult, stop feeding into the crap of television shows like Euphoria. Stop watching it. You don't need to. Don't give in to these lies and don't allow for this normal culture to persist when you know it's only going to lead to more devastation and heartbreak and loneliness, which we're already experiencing at all-time highs in our society. Despite all of the insanity I shared with you in this episode, I actually am quite optimistic about the future of this conversation and just generally culture in the United States. Because I think for the first time, parents have been really aware of what's happening in their child's classroom because of Zoom. As much as we all hate Zoom, that was a really positive result of what happened in the last few years. Conversations like this are happening with teenagers and young adults who are self-admitting I am miserable in my dating or hookup life. I don't want to do this anymore. There has to probably be a better alternative. Social media has been a tool to connect independent creators and journalists uh, and just voices on these subjects where we can actually talk about what's happening on the internet and make other people aware of it so that it's not hiding in darkness, but it's brought into light. And I see nothing but hope for Gen Z if we're willing to have these uncomfortable conversations now. We know culturally that this isn't okay. It might be normal, but it's not okay. And it's not making us happy or it's not making us feel fulfilled. It's making us feel really empty inside. So if you're listening to this and you are a Gen Zer, start to ask yourself, where in my life can I start to make differences that are going to lead me towards joy and happiness and fulfillment? If you're listening to this and you're a parent, start to ask yourself the question, how can I successfully set my child up for fulfilling relationships in their future and not let the normality of culture, the, the normality of their curriculum, the normality of the content they're consuming dictate the course of their life? When we are willing to get it all out there, when we're willing to touch on the really controversial subjects, that's when we can truly make a cultural difference in this country. And this is perhaps the most important way we can do so. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Outdated. Heavy subject, I know, but if you learned something new, don't forget to hit the heart button and subscribe to this channel or this podcast or follow this page so that you never miss another episode of Outdated or any other content that I'm working on. I'm so grateful for all of your guys' support and helping to make this series possible. I do all of this on my own, all of the filming and editing and distribution, and none of it would be possible without you guys listening and sharing with others. So don't forget to send this episode to somebody that might learn something new by listening to this series. Uh, I'm so excited to share some more awesome interviews with you guys next week. I'm not going to give away too much, but there's a lot of familiar faces coming up through the pipeline and some really, really big, exciting interviews coming your way. So don't forget every Tuesday, we have a new episode of Outdated come out. 
Before we go, I want to thank one more sponsor that helps to make Outdated possible, our friends at Makeup America. I have done so much work with them in the past. You guys have probably seen our collab with the patriotic palette of eyeshadows and blush and bronzer. They are most well known for their lipsticks and nail polish products, and all of their products are made right here in the U.S. of A. They are paraben-free, GMO-free, cruelty-free, and they allow for a small portion of their proceeds to invest back into other Made in America businesses. Go follow them on Instagram and social media. Give them some love on their website and place an order and you can use code the isabel brown on your next order of their products we love you so much makeup america and thank you so much for your support of the series we will see you guys next week mm -hmm.